going to give everybody one minute to summarize for the record uh, what you would like us all to remember from your testimony uh, so that we can uh, uh, move forward. Our intent is to uh, uh, obviously pass legislation this year in this Congress uh, on these issues to add on to what was in the uh, stimulus uh, package and to, uh, and to uh, look at it from a regulatory uh, perspective, uh, from a tax perspective. Uh, and uh, anything you can do to summarize in terms of how you view the issue and what you think needs to happen uh, would be very helpful to us. So let's go in reverse order uh, uh, of the opening uh, testimony and we'll begin with you, Mr. Hecker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, my, my closing comment about electric transmission and uh, the need to strengthen and upgrade the transmission grid is simply that it provides uh, options and it provides choices. If you've got a good solid grid, uh, you can use uh, a preferred energy mix, you can access renewable energy, uh, you can access the cheapest or the greenest power uh, available, uh, you can access emergency power. Uh, your utility can integrate uh, uh, those variable resources we've been talking about, and you can serve new customers. Uh, the the uh, electric transmission grid, as I said, doesn't solve all the problems, but uh, everything we've talked about in terms of efficiency uh, and clean energy uh, can't happen without transmission and a stronger transmission system. Thank you, Mr. Hacker. Uh, Ms. Brossmeyer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yes, the incorporation of turbine efficiency technologies is so important in today's discussion on clean energy. And I'd like to really have that in everybody's mind when they think about green energy and how we should be moving to get more power as our power needs in the world increase. Spar Shell is one great example that our company has developed that would improve the amount of power available and also provide green energy because some of the new power generated would actually require no fuel to generate. So I, my hope is that going forward when people think about green energy they say, wow, the first thing we ought to do is fix those plants that are on the ground already, some of them 30 to 50 years old, and let Florida Turbine and other companies put some new technologies in them to make them cleaner, to make them create more power, up to 15 percent more power, without putting too much money into infrastructure. Thank you, Ms. Prosmeyer. Uh, Mr. Zimmerman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Walmart, uh, because of our scale represents one of the largest footprints in the world, about 750 million square feet. We have about 150 million customers walking through our doors in our U.S. stores every year. Um, the things we've done with energy efficiency and existing control technologies, uh, we have the data that proves the results of those efforts and the paybacks. Uh, I think part of our role is to share that. We already have relationships with NREL, Oak Ridge, DOE, and others, but we are the biggest laboratory that you could hope to find. We want to be partners in this discussion and share all that. And in closing, I just got to add, uh, one of the things we can't lose sight of is energy efficiency. It's still the lowest hanging fruit. And as I walked into this room, I looked up at the lighting. It's T12 fluorescence. We haven't installed a T12 fluorescent lamp in a Walmart store in over a decade. Uh, we need to keep moving forward with energy efficient measures. Did you know that the Bush administration actually missed all 35 deadlines for improving appliances and lighting from 2001 to 2007? Well, now's our chance. <laughs> well, now's our chance, yeah. They, they missed their chance. So <laughs> we're, we're, believe me, it's going to happen, all right? It's like that we, we under, that's a classic working smarter, not harder uh, issue, huh? With the, you, know, you solve the problems with technology. Mr. Schur. Uh, thank you for the opportunity today to uh, testify. I think uh, my mother will also appreciate your, uh, your exchange, and I'll make sure she gets a chance to see it. Thank you. Um, I think it's evident that the smart grid is needed for energy efficiency and renewables. Uh, all the testimony today uh, came to that conclusion, uh, yet there is a substantial amount of inertia in the market. We don't think that inertia is from consumers or voters. We just finished 5,000 uh, consumer survey, and they all want to be more involved. In fact, 90 percent of them said they want a smart meter, if you believe that. 
So we're sure that consumers are ready for this. Uh, and I think you're, you're right in, in uh, describing it's important that it's, they understand what the benefits are and so forth. Uh, but this inertia is real, and I think the stimulus money will be excellent seed funding. It will get some areas started that otherwise wouldn't start, and we need to monitor that closely. And I think there could be an opportunity for additional funding to support what works. Uh, and finally, I think the DOE focus on standards would be a very helpful place to focus where standards acceleration. Already it's working, but it's working too slowly. It would also be a place where we could make yeah. it handrails. And, and Mr. Schur, just in terms of uh, talking about uh, mothers, it, when, when uh, Bill McGowan, who was the founder of MCI, came into my office in 1977 and started talking about another phone company, I was thinking, now how is he going to do that? Will he build like three foot high phone, uh, you know, uh, phone poles all across America? How can you have another phone company? You know, how can you have lower like lower phone bills? Because so it took me about two months just to internalize this this shift. But you have to explain it to people uh, in ways that they then embrace that change and try to break the connection with the old way of doing business. So we thank you for your testimony, Mr. Gilligan. Thank you. The smart grid is about enabling high penetration of renewables, both wind and solar. It's about more efficiency, less losses and waste in the delivery system. And for my mother and consumers, it's about getting them information so they can make more informed choices about how and when they want to use their power to save money. To accelerate this and to get most beneficial use out of the stimulus money, we are recommending that we focus on really demonstrating these benefits so that the, the cost-benefit equation is clear to utilities and to regulators and that this, this investment continues to transform the grid well after the stimulus money is gone. We, uh, we believe that the technology is ready today and the benefits are real, but it needs to be demonstrated. Thank you, Mr. Gilligan. Mr. Casey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the smart grid, as we all have acknowledged, has the potential to reduce emissions by an enormous relative amount. One, one expert has, said, has estimated to be the equivalent of taking 140 million cars off the road, a big impact. It has been called the single most productive application of information technology solution to climate change. Eighty-five percent of the carbon emission reduction benefits come from the grid and the operation of the grid. Uh, so so what, what is needed to make that happen? Part of it is a cost problem. We talked about that. Some of that can be solved simply by getting manufacturing volume. Some of that will be solved as the technology innovates with deployment. We, but we need the stimulus package that's now, the money that's now at the DOE has been given to them with somewhat flexible uh, assignment. They have to uh, disperse money to the programs that Mr. Gilligan uh, talked about where we can prove this. Regulatory changes in the states need to be made so that the utilities, who are the ones who are going to deploy this equipment, actually can make money at it instead of lose money. And I think standards as well is an important element. Great. Well, we thank uh, each of you for your testimony uh, today. This is a very important hearing uh, going uh, forward. Um, the, um, the, the revolution that is now underway is something that we have to speed up. We have to make it happen faster. It will create more jobs. It will help in a, with our environment. If we can electrify the cars that we drive, back out the oil that we import uh, from uh, OPEC uh, and make our whole uh, system of producing goods in our society more efficient while reducing uh, the price of electricity for people at home. So this is win, 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 win. It, but we have to uh, really try to work hard now to uh, get this done. And uh, while my mother passed away 10 years ago, her admonition still gripped my brain, and uh, she gave me an agenda, uh, as each of our mothers do, do for, uh, for what we should be doing every day. And so my intention this year is to make this revolution uh, become something that's national and not just localized. We thank each of you for your testimony today. Thank you. This hearing is adjourned.